welcome to our Getting Ready for School in Niagara Wheatfield. I'm Nora O'Brien. I'm one of the principals in Niagara Wheatfield. I'm at Eric Road and today with me we have Shannon Smith who is a teacher at Eric Road, Tina Seeger who is a teacher at Colonial Village, and Erica Tortorella who is a teacher at West Street Elementary and they are all veteran kindergarten teachers who are going to share their expertise and what you need to know coming into kindergarten. Today, we are gonna be looking at the transition to school. I'm going to be talking about some of the processes in our district to help your child transition from either pre-K or from home into kindergarten, such as our screening process and our orientation process. Also, the kindergarten teachers are going to talk about the math, literacy, and motor skill expectations for coming into kindergarten and what you can work on with your child over the summer to help prepare him or her for kindergarten. And finally, we will give you some contact information at the end in case you have any questions. Let's first look at the transition to school. Next steps in the kindergarten process. The next step in the kindergarten process is kindergarten screening. Current Niagara Wheatfield pre-K students enrolled at Bunny Bunch will be screened during the school day in June. Students not enrolled in Niagara Wheatfield pre-K at Bunny Bunch will be screened at Niagara Wheatfield district offices. This will occur sometime in June, July, or August. Your child's home school will call you to set up an appointment. Also, you can check the district website for more information. The next step in the kindergarten process is orientation. Orientation will be on the first day of school, which is September 7th, 2021. This will be a time for you to drop off supplies for you and your child to meet the teacher and staff. Also, your child will get a tour of the school and classroom. The main office will be calling you to set up your session by appointment. You or an adult must transport your child to school and wait outside the building due to COVID safety guidelines. Important parts of the kindergarten day. I will take you through what a typical day looks like in kindergarten. We start off with calendar in which we discuss what day of the week it is, what month it is, and what the year is. We talk about how many days we've been in school and how many days we have left. And we sing songs and practice various skills that we're learning throughout that week. We do reading workshop in kindergarten, which encompasses shared reading, phonics, big books, guided reading, small group reading, and one-on-one -on -one reading. We do writing workshop with the children. We teach the New York State math module lessons each day, and children will go to a curriculum extension each day. That is typically art and music one time a week and physical education three times a week. We also teach social studies through literature and magazines and science through the Amplify curriculum. Children generally need play every single day, so they get recess as well on a kindergarten day. There will be a complete schedule given in the fall for what your child's day in the 2021 school year will look like. Math. Pre-K standards. These are being shared with you so you know what the expectations are before your child enters kindergarten. These will all be reviewed in kindergarten as well. For numbers, your child is expected to be able to count aloud to 20. They are expected to be able to label a number of objects with a written numeral, the numbers zero through five. They should understand what zero means and what it means when you say no objects or nothing. When counting, saying the number names while pairing objects to each number and understanding that the last number name tells how many objects in total, zero and ten. 
So if you give them bears, they should be able to count one while they touch one, two while they touch two, and when they get to the end of counting the bears, they should understand that because they stopped at 10, that's how many bears there are. They should be able to develop a strategy to answer the question, how many? They should be able to count objects when in, a, when in a line, an array, a circle, or scattered all over the place. The vocabulary they should know is more, less, greater than, fewer than, equal to, first, and last. And they should be able to extend patterns, red, blue, red, blue, or green, green, pink, green, green, pink, they should be able to sort objects into categories like size, color, shape. They should be able to understand simple addition and subtraction situations. For example, if we have three apples and add two more, how many apples do we have all together? Here are some more pre-K standards for patterns. Your child should be able to name shapes and see them in the environment. For example, the window is a rectangle or the clock is a circle. Their shape vocabulary should include circle, round, rectangle, straight, side, corner, square, triangle, roll, stack, and slide. Their position vocabulary should include knowing what top means bottom, up, down, in front of, behind, over, under, and next to. And your child should be able to discuss, compare, and sort 2D and 3D shapes and objects. And again, all of these pre-K standards are reviewed in kindergarten. pre-k standards for math continued. We talk about the comparison of length, weight, and capacity. Capacity is how much liquid a container can hold. And when we're talking about capacity with children, we usually talk about things like buckets, cups, bathtubs, and pools. Um, for vocabulary, we would like them to know what the words big and small mean, tall and short, longer than and shorter than, Full versus empty, heavy versus light, and then heavier than and lighter than as well. Activities with numbers. And we in pre-K do zero through five, and then we extend those numbers higher up in kindergarten. But here are some activities you could do with your children. Use any five objects and help your child touch each object, counting as they go. So they can count stuffed animals, really any of their toys they can count. They can count while they're climbing stairs. They can count the plates, the forks, and the napkins while setting the table. They can write the numbers zero to five in chalk on the driveway. They can even write them on paper, on a whiteboard, um, on a chalkboard, and then um, they can paint them. Over time, your child can actually write out the number one in word form as well. You can have him or her draw a number of circles to match that number. You can have them coin, sorry, count coins in a cup, count and sort them, um, or count the coins from their bank. Vocabulary you'd want to work on are things like, are there more boys or girls in our car? Are there fewer blankets or pillows on the couch? Are there more goldfish or fruit snacks on your plate? While going for a walk, count to 10 and then to 20, and of course so on if they are past that. When you're talking about addition and subtraction stories, you can say things like, right now there are three plates on the table. If we add one more plate, how many will, the, will there be in all? If four of us are sitting at the table and one person leaves, how many people will still be at the table? So really any opportunities for math in numbers in the real world, you can do with your child on a daily basis.
Hi everyone, this is Tina Seeger. More at math activities that deal with shapes, such as patterns, tennis ball, soccer ball, tennis ball, soccer ball, what comes next? Or clap, stomp, stomp, clap, what comes next? What shapes do you see around this restaurant? The table is a rectangle. The top of the cup looks like a circle. A napkin folded in half diagonally looks like a triangle. Position vocabulary. Put the cup behind the plate. Put the fork next to the spoon. What is under the table? Or categories. Sorting stuffed animals by size, color, type of animal. We want children to understand that items have more than one characteristic. Math activities using weight, length, and capacity. Picking up fruit at the grocery store. Is the apple heavier or lighter than the melon? Seesaw at the playground. Observing what you see, heavier and lighter. What is lighter than a book? What is heavier than you? What is longer than this crayon? Make a train of cars that is shorter than the couch. Can this cup hold more or less water than the bucket? Will our tub hold more water than a pool? Here are some online technology resources that are available. Literacy. Environmental print. Look for these signs to begin reading. Read, read, read. Children need to see and hear hundreds of books before they are ready to begin reading themselves. Families that read just 20 minutes a day are building essential pre-reading skills. Stories can include diverse topics and multicultural backgrounds, rhyming, fairy tales, alphabet, repeated phrases, narratives, fantasy, etc. Reread favorite titles in order to help children listen to the story for different reasons. Hey there, it's Erica Tortorella, kindergarten teacher at West Street Elementary. What to do when you read? Enjoy, snuggle together, create a warm and loving environment. Ask questions that make you both think, but not too many. Choose books that have glorious illustrations and wonderful words. Don't shy away from deep subjects as well. Talk about the characters and their actions that related to your child's life. Nursery Rhymes and Songs Learning nursery rhymes develops extensive early literacy skills. Oral language, phonemic awareness, vocabulary, phonics, fluency, rhythm, and comprehension. When listening to nursery rhymes, children learn to listen closely, remember, anticipate, and predict, and even follow directions. The cadence of nursery rhymes are similar to conversation, giving kids patterned and predictable practice in this area. Increasing the auditory skills of a young child, especially when coupled with movements or clapping. Writing. Scribbles are important. These are the stages of writing. Scribble. Symbols, not letters. Letters and mock letters, and finally on two letters. Scribbles begin a natural progression towards writing. Honor the scribbles, the symbols, and the letters that children make to represent thoughts. Technology resources. A great website to have your child explore is starfall.com. A few apps that are also recommended include Epic, Magnetic Letters, and also Who Can Read. Motor Skills. Motor Skills. In order to help develop your child's motor skills, to prep them for kindergarten. Some examples that you could do at home would be 
allowing them to use scissors, coloring, chalk drawing, teaching them how to tie their shoes or even Velcro, outside play, letter and number formation, buttoning, zipping, and snapping, and also tying their shoes. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact your building principal. Colonial Village is Mrs. Marissa Ruich. Eric Road is Mrs. Nora O'Brien. Tuscarora is Ms. Elizabeth Correri. And West Street is Mr. Theron Mong. We look forward to seeing your incoming kindergartner.